Hey there guys, how's it going? I'm joined by the amazing Water KH to talk a little bit about the awesome new uh, dumping of information we just got from the Kingdom Hearts Dark Road Twitter. So, Water, if you want to say hello, man. Hi. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that's perfect, that's perfect. All right, so uh, if you guys aren't aware, the Kingdom Hearts Dark Road Twitter is basically planning on revealing a bunch of information from now until the release of the game. We still don't know when that release date actually is, but... I'm guessing that given its initial release date was like spring 2020, which I think is like ending now, it kind of been, obviously COVID delayed it a fair bit, but I don't think it's delayed it that much. So I think we're going to see it pretty soon. And granted by all the screenshots they're putting out, I think probably sooner than later. But anyway, we have gotten eight new screenshots on the English version and the Japanese version. There's a bit of overlap, but I think we get about 10 new screenshots overall to dig through. So... I thought, what if you wouldn't mind joining me, man? We'll go through and have a little, little peek at some. My hair's flicking up. Have a little peek at some of the, <laughs> some of the new screenshots. So, we start off with the actual, uh, the title screen, I guess, which is going to load into probably the first cutscene oh, of the game. Way? I didn't think that. Yeah, that makes sense. But... I, I forgot to go and capture that as well. Uh, but it's the same thing as the other day, where basically you would reply and a bot. Oh, there you go. There's water right there. Would um, basically yeah, give you an automatic screenshot reply. So, a sore alarm. And a few at Project Start. Look at all these people here. Um, but yeah, a few people have already done it. But we've gone ahead and grabbed all the screenshots for you to go have a look through. So, I wanted to start with the cutscenes. Um, as we can see here, the overlay text is sometimes all it takes is a single step. I think Water and I can both agree, and again, please do cut in whenever you want to, that this is meant to be the young, I think, child Xehanort, as he's first been like literally led from his home that he yearns to leave. He, he, We've known all along that young Xehanort yearns to leave Destiny Islands. He feels trapped. He feels confined on this tiny little speck of land. But an opportunity presents itself. He's approached by his future self, which he doesn't realize is his future self, in a robe and given the opportunity to leave where he gets to Scala. Um, I'm going to cut in here with cutscenes from Birth by Sleep in 3D showing that, that character. Um... But yeah, what I like, we were talking before that the character model they use in Birth by Sleep in 3D seems to be a much, much older version of younger Xehanort than what we know. He ha he has to be the age of a child when he gets a Scala. So I personally believe, obviously Birth by Sleep came out in 2010, so I'm not exactly blaming them for being like, you know, we'll use an adolescent Xehanort character model, even though in hindsight now they probably should have used a child Xehanort model. Um, because... Yeah. But I think that's... It's not really the end of I the think, world. Yeah. No, not for sure. I think the hair still gets me. Because it obviously looks a lot shorter here. To me, at least. Right. And But they have the same white. I think we were talking about in the stream. Yeah, like the white and the, the outfit gray and the... is identical. And yeah, yeah like, the outfit is 100% yeah. identical. It's the the white shirt, the the puffed up collar, the arm braces, the gray the gray jeans into the black boots it's it's the same exact outfit so right. yeah i think it's just a slight error in not even really an error but like you know us birth by sleep in 3d used a, an adolescent say not model which i think in hindsight they would have rather used a child model but i think we can forgive that <clears throat> and then i think we were talking about how the the secret reports in kingdom hearts 3 talks about young Xehanort on his way to meet his master, going through like all these kinds of different darknesses and stuff. And I think this is foreshadowing, or not foreshadowing, but showing that. Like he's gonna go through this darkness portal and then travel through, I don't know, the oceans between or something, but encounter all these different darknesses and stuff until he gets to Skull and Kylum. 100%, 100%, yeah. So Secret Report 2 in Kingdom Hearts 3 basically says exactly that. It says that until a few short years ago, I'd known only of my own world, a speck of land surrounded by sea, but how I'd dreamed of, yearned for the world beyond. And granted guidance from the future, I left that nest behind. So, granted guidance from the future. I don't... Correct, well, you tell me what you think as well, but I don't necessarily think it has to be Ansem that opens the portal. Part of me thinks it's like... Like like you were saying, and I want, if you want to expand on this, by all means, please do. But it's a bit of a causality loop for it the future version of Xehanort to open a portal for the younger version of himself to create the future future version of himself like yeah <laughs> it's convoluted i almost uh, want sorry you go yeah. no i just like the whole paradox of it i don't think it works but 
I mean, maybe it could work. I don't know. Just the fact that his younger self is being helped by his older self to, be, to become his older self. Exactly. Like, I I see how it works, but it's a it's a loop. It's like a bit a of a bit of a paradox. Yeah. yeah. I almost want it to be like that. Does Zaynor just yearn so strongly to escape that he awakens his own inner dark powers? But maybe he doesn't actually have any dark powers yet. We we don't know. But I, I think that would be literally one of the first things we find out when we actually get to play Dark Road. I'm sure it'll be one of the first cutscenes or a flashback yeah, early sure. on. For sure. Um, and then, yeah, so as I treaded the path to my master's side, I came in contact with darkness in many forms. I knew even then, as by instinct, how terrifying this power was, it could be harnessed, mastered. But to me, the important part there is that as I, tre <laughs> as I treaded the path to my master's side, I came in contact with darkness in many forms. So we don't know if it's going to be a straight shot from like, okay, opening a dark portal in Destiny Islands, boof, immediately get the Scala, or if there's going to be sort of leapfrogging along the way to get there, if he's going to see some darkness that inspires him, who knows. But Right, yeah. I don't have anything to add. No, no, that's totally <laughs> fine. Sorry, I was just trying to like back up and get a better version on the screen, but eh, it doesn't matter. Alright, let's go to the next, next one. So, then we get the Scala. We've seen shots like this before. We've seen them talking on the bench. We've seen the bench before, so this isn't anything particularly new. But I think the usage of the word ocean is pretty interesting. Like, maybe I'm making this up in my head, but I feel like I've heard the, the term, like, the ocean between used to describe the the distance that spreads the worlds apart. You know, the the vast, never-ending sea of darkness mm -hmm. that, that keeps the world separate. Um but maybe it's literally just like he washes up on the shore, like Xehanort washes up on the shore of Scala, where Ericus already lives, and Xehanort sort of says, oh, I, I just washed ashore, I came from across the ocean, like not willing to reveal that, hey, a ghost claiming to be my future self, or claiming to be from the future, um, teleported me here from an island. Maybe he wants to kind of keep right. that close to the chest for now. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, because they are on like a literal ocean. Like there's right. all these different windmill islands. So right. like that makes sense but then also we have the whole like each star or each light is a planet in this huge ocean or whatever mm -hmm. so exactly yeah. yeah exactly okay um we get our first look at the brand new characters in the classroom so we can see as bio pointed out all six seats uh seven sorry seven one for the master as well um but yeah we get our first look at the new characters in the union cross dark road art style sorry <clears throat> Um, yeah, I don't know if we can get much more information out of that just yet. I mean, maybe the books, if we kind of zoom in, have more information to tell us, but it's kind of hard to see on these kind of blurry screenshots so far. Um, I'm sure once we get to actually play it, we can take our own high resolution screenshots and kind of dive in. But I mean, I know like Bio was saying 13th Vessel has led us kind of in to explore this room. Um, maybe those books like are in the same configuration on the table as they are in Kingdom Hearts 3. Um, it'd be interesting to compare the pair now that we can see the entire room. Yeah. Uh, like, I think there's Scala writing on this purple book here. <laughs> Is there anything you wanted to point out, Water? Uh, I, I don't think so. No. <laughs> I think it's, it's yeah. Dry. <laughs> um, I mean, the X, I mean, that we can kind of the, see the X yeah. on his chest. <laughs> That's probably, like, the big <laughs> thing that people have kind of been in contention about whether or not he actually has an X, but I'm pretty sure that the black um what would you call it i don't know straps that kind of cover his chest oh. do go all the way down and do form an x to make mm -hmm. braggy braggy like the rest um if you guys don't know who these characters I mean, are i covered the reveal a couple of days ago sorry water i don't know you're good oh, i just want to point out to you that they're they're like insignias like the master yes. or their masters are all visible now insignias yeah. to, right and they the girls have the two gold ones and the guys have the two white ones mm, I'm assuming. that's I true if that has any significance or not no that's but... true yeah i mean maybe i know terra ven and aqua terra has a gold one and <clears throat> aqua and ven have like silver ones so i don't know if it's like a class or a rank or something within the unions or yeah I potentially like unions but the yeah. coat that erd what's the name erd, erd is wearing is kind of interesting like people have said it kind of might look like a little bit like um like ansem like yeah, I think I heard coat. Yeah, Lunar is talking Zaynor's about that. Coat. I don't see it myself. It was Lunar, yeah, that's right. I I don't know if I see it. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I'm just the fact that it. it's a cape kind of has a bit of that to it. Yeah. It's funny, look at the shoes on Vor there. They almost look like 
maybe I'm reading it wrong, but they have like the kind of like scoop backward parts that Aquas do. Maybe they're heels? I don't know. But compared to like the sneakers that, that Verdi is wearing. Verdi, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, what's, what's his name? Bra Bra Braga. Braga. Yeah. Um, like he yeah, seems I mean, so out yeah. of place outfit wise compared to the rest. Like they've all got their For copes sure. and their robes and everything. And he's like, what's up guys? And then Megalovania yeah. starts playing. Like, <laughs> right. And his hair's much less like red here than it was in, in the Nomura artwork. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> right. But yeah. And um, what's her name? The Ava clone. <laughs> she looks a lot. Yeah. Uh, she looks a lot less tiny comparatively. Yes, yeah. And I don't know if that's like a quirk of Union Cross that there's really only like two sizes of characters. Um, but 100%, mm -hmm. she doesn't seem like the teeny tiny little thing she does. Oh yeah. my goodness. <coughs> in that in that uh, Nomura artwork. <laughs> right. And by the same token, like um, her mood, her, her mod, whatever, doesn't look as tall compared to the rest. Right. I think they try to do the illusion. Yes, kind of thing, but 100%. You can definitely tell that he's standing further, further up. Back, yeah, distance wise, back yeah, from the camera, yeah. That's a clever little trick. They're all such like short, stubby little legs. Anyway, maybe we should move on to the next one. <laughs> so that's all the card scenes uh, that we've seen so far. And then we actually get a little peek at the UI. So, oh, we've got the, okay. Let's, let's go to this one first. So, uh, Xehanort here. So this seems to be the main menu of Kingdom Hearts Dark Road. And already there's a lot to go over here. So it seems we're all going to be playing a Xehanort. Like if there was any hope of playing as other characters i think that's not gonna happen i think it's just gonna be saying what um mm -hmm. there is uh, a japanese and english version of this screenshot which the japanese version the characters are level one the english the characters are level 11 um and what are, we were both sort of pointing out that like there has a stat based system do you want to kind of jump on that uh so i put you on the spot of... yeah <laughs> I, I think we were I think what the, the conclusion we came to is it it's probably going to function well i guess two two schools of thought it could function as like every other kingdom hearts game as whereas you like you dive to the heart and you get the dream sword the dream wand or the or dream staff and the dream shield which yeah. we can see in the top right those kind of weapons are used in this game yeah um and then that would kind of dictate your route so in the next screenshot we see that you have the battle points for 40 and then your level up icon is or your level up your thing to level up i guess is 30 so when you level up then whatever route you go through like your stats would boost according to that according route. to the route that you picked yeah yeah hopefully that was <clears throat> clean or like understandable oh absolutely yeah. no that's, that's cool that. all good all good and then um yeah, so obviously, like, it seems we're gathering... Look, we're, we're only... We're defining them as battle points for now. Just this little symbol of BP here. Which seems to correlate, we we think, to this point system up the top here. That um, in the English screenshot, there's 3,615 being collected. We're thinking that's a similar to, like, a Lux level from Union Cross, where you collect X amount of those, and they contribute to your, to your level. Um... Like you were saying, there were two schools of thought. The other school of thought might be that it's it's a sort of like chain of memories hybrid level up system where once you level up, you then have a choice of like where you want to allocate your stat points towards. Like like you were saying, you might get a flat bonus to every single stat and then you might be able to get to attribute like, okay, I want to invest in defense. I might want to invest in magic. There are five things you right. can invest in. HP, strength, defense, magic, and magic resist. So magical defense. Um... And you may get to pick and choose what you allocate there. Again, these screenshots, I just want to say, these could be just beta. They are not necessarily representative of the final build. We've seen that with Union Cross, that screenshots have changed in the past to represent different things in their final version. Um, if you want to compare to now, you can see that the uh, the Japanese version, the character starts at level 1, and all the stats are quite balanced. So, potentially, that's indicative of, you know, you get to choose where you want to put the stat points, but we don't really know yet for sure. Right, and I think what you were saying before is in the previous one in the English, uh, they have like the three uh, Keyblade cards that are for your attack, but this character is obviously more geared towards magic, so it doesn't really make sense to 
right. build on a strength build. Yeah, it, but it, it, it doesn't seem that the cards contribute to the stat points, though. It seems like they're independent, because if... Oh, yeah, that's right. You would think that if we equipped three... It's hard to see on the screenshot here, but we've equipped three strength or attack... Physical attack, I guess, type um, type cards right. to the deck. Um, which you can see by that sword symbol on the top there. And the sword symbol on the top left of each of these three cards. We haven't equipped any magic or we haven't equipped any defensive yet. Our offensive stat is the weakest of the bunch. So it does seem strange. And it seems like they're independent of each other. It's not... Cards don't give you stat boosts is what we're, what we're trying to get at so far. Mm -hmm. um, but that does lead us, nightly, lead us nicely into the deck. Uh, this one we're a little bit divided on, I think, but maybe we sort of come together now I as we discuss it more. Right. I think it's like confusing coming from Union Cross to this because mm -hmm. you had the PSMs like uh, Power, right. Speed, and Magic. Right. Where in this, it seems to just be color coded. So you have five of each for upright and reversed. Right. Whereas you can put like Magic on a green slot and it's like wait <laughs> that doesn't make sense but right you wouldn't get the strength yeah. bonus but you could do it at least yeah what we no, think what i'm saying is like green could be magic oh right 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 yes yeah, sorry yeah sorry sorry it's, with you, yeah, yeah. it's confusing for my brain <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah what we're thinking is that you can create several where you know multiple decks of up to 30 cards and that basically determines how you're going to attack. But we'll show you like attacking screenshots in a second. But that basically determines how you try and defeat enemies. So to my understanding, you can go in anywhere from, I guess, zero to 30 cards in your deck. And if you don't actually have a card allocated to a slot, it will just give you a default generic empty like attack, which we'll see in future screenshots. But it seems like in Union Cross, you could have like, let's say the Starlight Keyblade, which, we, which would have strength bonuses awarded if you brought in um, like upright magic uh, medals, I think two upright magic medals, rev reverse power and upright speed, and two upright speeds. Um, but here it seems like you can bring in up to five of each, up to five of reverse power, upright power, upright speed, reverse speed, upright magic, reverse magic, and that's it. You can't, you can't bring six of upright magic and less of the rest. It seems like you're hard limited to which ones you can bring in. Um, I think the idea of having multiple decks is that you could have like a magic build versus a defensive build versus an attacking build. Like you could just switch on the fly. Um, but sorry, man, go, go. Uh, I, maybe I misunderstood you. Because, yeah, I think I think you're good. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, 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 please, please. <laughs> like if you've got a different idea, but by all means. Um, well, because you were saying that you get five power, five speed and five magic for upright and reverse yes i think so okay. yeah which would be which would be but, the 30 cards that you can bring in right right but in this case i don't think psm is involved in this game uh, sorry i should PSM? i should say i should say red blue and green then but I, i'm i'm referring okay. sorry that you know you're 100 correct I, sh I should say red blue and green uh, yeah i think it's just confusing to go yeah, from Kingdom Hearts and Union Cross to this. In, in the same app. color coded it. Famous. Right, no, you're, thank you. Yeah, you're right. I should have I should have said that. Although I do wonder, like, there has to be some difference between red, blue, and green. Like, like, are power, speed, and magic still going to linger in terms of the effect? I guess I guess we don't know. Like, we have no way of knowing right now. Um, well, they're, they're different for sure. Well, maybe... Like, you, you get bonuses from stacking. Right, right. But you get bonuses from stacking the same colors together. Right. So maybe it's just that. Maybe it's just the strategy of that. All right, we'll, we'll talk about. Right, let's move on to the next slide then. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So combat. So I guess we're going to start with. We've gotten one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six combat screenshots. A lot of them kind of cover similar ground, but there's a fair bit to go over here. So let's start with. Let's start with this one here. Just a generic, a nice little generic. Um, Xehanort's casting an attack, he's casting the Blade of Seven attack, which you might recognize from Union Cross if you played it, if you ever used the Jack Skellington medal or the Black Coat Mickey medal. Um, but as we've covered in the past, there seems to be this, like, uh, turn order ranking system of, like, similar to, like, other Final Fantasy games in the past, like 10, for example, um, where, where, 
you can't even see the heartless because it's, it's covered in light but <laughs> we're right. all together as a party attacking enemies and i assume each mission will have a different party composition but that we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves um the meat of it is on the bottom there with the card selection so the 30 cards that you choose to bring in i assume it will randomly select five and lay them out on the ground and it's going to be like a sort of pseudo chain of memory pseudo flick rush system where you pick this is my my interpretation and what if you want to correct me for it please 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 do but um I'm with that, yeah. I th i'm thinking we're picking up to three cards probably like you said the one the one that you pick first determines the special attack you get to use and then i guess you pick up to two more cards to boost that damage if you want so like let's say you picked flare here for example right. so you pick the middle card it's a magic blue card and if you <laughs> if you combine it with yeah. let's say the abu and then the playing cards card because you put two more blue cards behind it it then gets a strength boost yeah. which i think we can see i think we can see here like this yeah. character is chosen to use uh three red cards in a row and therefore they get a, a two times strength multiplier if they if they'd used one of the green ones instead they would have gotten less of a multiplier um yeah and also i want to kind of point out to the the book of prophecy symbols we think are placeholders because in that um when you're setting up your deck you have like the three key blades and then you have the rest of the slots that are incomplete yes but i we think they're going to be like or i, I don't know if i should say we but <laughs> no. in my opinion um they replace all their cards, but you can use them as like a base attack. Yeah. And then use them as like multipliers. Yes. So I think this what the screenshot we're seeing right now could literally be that screenshot from two two shots ago with like one of each of the keyblades in the upright slots and then just nothing throughout the rest. Because you can see there's a generic red generic keyblade, an upright red generic keyblade, and a reverse red generic keyblade. Mm -hmm. which would be like we said before which would be corresponding to oops, corresponding to here like it's 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 literally these empty slots here is what would fill in the gaps there maybe right although that isn't the master Makes master sense. symbol that's the other symbol that's the ericacy symbol yeah yeah so <laughs> we don't know just yet but um <clears throat> But it seems our party members can help us out. So, like, in the in there's a Japanese and an uh, English screenshot showing that, in this example here, like, the young Vor is casting on her turn. Before we attack, before we actually execute the attack, because the Shadow still has full health, um, but she's casting, like, a magic buff to us, which I don't believe in this circumstance would help, because we're attacking with attack-type cards, um, not, like, spell-type. But you can see it's it's applied like a two times buff to us in the very very top here um so yeah it seems like our party members will be able to cast certain buffs on us like we can see in the next screenshot in the japanese version um young ericus has cast a similar thing to us he's cast a strength boost which i believe we would be able to benefit from um it's still not clear like if we set up our attack then our allies like buff it and then we actually perform the attack. We're still not quite sure the, 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 how the turn order affects things. Right. Um, but I did want to point out too the three uh, counters on screen. You have the enemy counter, which is in the the far right, is like a circular um, countdown clock. I assume is when they they'll be able to attack you. And then you have your reload timer, which we aren't really clear on yet. Um, I mean, it, it fills up, and it kind of reminds me of the chain of memories when you can reload your deck, but it's, yeah, I'm not really sure how many cards you're going to get. Yeah. Or, like, what is that? And then the third one is the, um... So, yeah, 19, Yeah, when you're doing, like, 19, a special 16, attack. What's that? Sorry, I just, I just was pointing out that it's the, the 25, the 16, the 19, the 22, the 19 there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, the Yeah, your number of cards left. Yeah, and sorry, just um, the, the circular bar, what I was talking about is the one on the very, very right-hand side of the screen right now that's, I guess, gradually filling up and becoming more red as the Heartless becomes mm -hmm. closer to attacking. Just look at me, I've luckily gone... Uh, except for that last one. I've gone and put in order, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was good, yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, the last counter is the... Um, 
you can actually see it pretty good in this one. I think so. You you'll put your first card up, which is the Riku, and then the two other cards, which will give you the times two multiplier. Mm -hmm. But then you see this like big blue sparking as it's going down, and I'm assuming that's how long you have to add multipliers to your initial attack. That sounds fair. Like it yeah. almost like it's a fuse that's counting down until the actual attack is fired <clears throat> off. Right. Right. Yeah. And you have that. that long to like add more or whatever to it. Yeah. So do we think, do we think like they're going to attack and then once our turn is over, the Heartless will get to retaliate or is it just, it's just literally, it's always counting down that circular bar on the right hand side. And whenever that fills up, attack <laughs> just straight away, interrupt everything we do oh. and attack. What do you think it's going to... Actually, you know what? I think, I wonder if the yellow bars are attack timer. It is not like a reload function. I wonder if we only have 30 cards per turn and we can only attack when the yellow bar fills. Yeah. Because that would kind of balance out the cues and stuff. Hmm. Like that's representative of our place in the left hand queue. Like when it's full, we right. get to do our attack. Yeah. Or this is when we've used our attack and now it's refilling. Now it's charging back up. Yeah, okay. I could see that. Yeah. Do you think the 16 left is like how many cards get replenished after... I'm assuming, like when you use them, you'll you'll take more cards to fill in. Yeah. Right away. Yeah. Hmm. Because then I don't. But then that affects like, like how do you reload? Maybe you don't reload. Maybe you only just, have thirty. Just cards let it hit zero and then. Battle. I guess, well, and then just lose straight away. I don't know. In the uh, the only thing yeah, against that know. would be like <laughs> like like a longer, more drawn out boss battle. Like you'd have to. Surely we're going to use more than 30 cards. But yeah, like, I guess the other interesting thing to point out is that we've seen it before, but the Heartless counter on the very, very top of the screen, um, I guess is the amount of enemies left in the stage. But what we haven't seen on this particular, like, battle screen is that what we can only assume is a battle points, battle points, uh, like how many we've collected in this stage. Helmet. Which, yeah, which is like represented by this weird-looking like helmet. Yeah, I think we were speculating that it could be like um, like an armor, made armor. armor. Yeah, is that what it's called? I'm blanking. Yeah, yeah, right yeah. Now. Keyblade armor. Yeah. Because um, it kind of has the like the helmet look. Absolutely, it definitely looks like a helmet to me, a hundred percent. So maybe you get a you get some keyblade armor when you fill up a certain amount of points. <laughs> I'd be maybe. Maybe that's what it means, though. Maybe, like, the armor is the symbol of, like, a master or someone who's able to go out on their own. And it's like, when we when we get 100,000 of these points, you know, that's that's the sign that we've become... We've done enough training to become a master. And... Right. But Ventus has his armor, and he's not a He's master, a little baby right? boy, yeah, I know, yeah. But I think, I think these kids are, like, literally going to be the first ones that ever go out and explore the worlds. Mm-hmm. So maybe, like... But as of right know. now, they'd be know. in the the Book of Prophecies, right? Yeah. Or like the projections from them. Because oh, we, we have the Emblem Heartless. Here, and we should so. mention that, yeah, that we're, we're still fighting Emblem Heartless, therefore it isn't in the real world. In Agrabah. In Agrabah, <laughs> yeah. Which, which I guess the, the world will exist, but it's literally the same map that we will visit, you know, that we visited in Union Cross, which makes sense. Because why would they bother making new assets? But like... The, the world as we know it shouldn't exist in that state like Aladdin shouldn't be there for another 100 years or 70 years whatever it's gonna be right um, and I think we were talking too about how like I think the reason we haven't seen their masters yet is because it's someone from the dandelions potentially yeah and so if they're from there then they've been doing these missions for like forever now right so it's kind of like a traditional thing to kind of put right. them through right but they're not collecting lux this time which is interesting yeah well in theory they've built scala right like they've they've carried the world like they, they don't want to collect it anymore because like they collected it from the dying world and brought it into the new one and then distributed it to, to rebuild the world so they probably they don't want to collect it again because like that was the function of collecting it was to keep it safe from the world oh. being destroyed so now right. they've now they've spread it back out and i guess battle points are, like it's a, a gameplay mechanic to to make us want to play i suppose but 
from a law point of view we're not trying to collect light anymore i guess is mm -hmm. what, I'm, what i'm getting at but obviously like all these cards here still have images of people from the future so it's still a book of prophecies related um right right the actual like mechanics of attacking um yeah it's interesting that all our keyblades are like the exact perfect half and half of light and darkness and like we saw in the past that Ericus could use dark attacks and yeah interesting the uh the dark and wait what he used the dark break in the first that screenshot point. that we saw oh, oh the the keyblades being light and darkness no 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 uh, Ericus used like because you can see Xehanot oh, using blade okay, of seven okay. right now okay. yeah the attacks yeah Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. People were curious about that. Um, but yeah, I, well, is there anything else we should touch on? I think we've we've hit a lot of it. Um, I think the enemies are probably the last thing. They have like this collection of, like a photo book of enemies. That oh, are, sorry, uh, thank you. Yeah, to, like collect or. We didn't miss that. We didn't miss the um, the album right, of unique, yeah. of, of Dark Road. Which I think um, Bio found the the last on the bottom left is the possessor he did yes so yeah and we can so see like enemy number out. 11. all right i wonder what circumstance would let you see an enemy but having but not having defeated it like maybe he maybe they maybe they lost to the enemy he failed the mission I'm, right. I'm assuming because they've only um, defeated six so they haven't defeated the possessor ever right right it's interesting and that it they looks have... like these are like bronze so i'm assuming like bronze silver gold platinum or something yeah sure yeah. The different tiers of enemies. So it's either, yeah, it's either like variants of the same enemy, like you could fight like a, a four star version of the Shadow. Or, like you said, these right. are only one out of four in the ranking system, and there are much stronger Heartless down towards the, you know, the, the 51 end. Um, right, right. But yeah, I'm sure a lot of these will be reused from Unicross, which, you know, fair enough. Why bother making more? Um, speaking but, of Unicross. Yeah, no. You... Sorry, 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 go. Oh, just the. I don't know if this is just like testing or whatever but like the fact that they only have 51 enemies right i find is interesting especially since that would indicate to me that they're cutting out like the like the kind of quirky ones like like the right i can't think of any right now but like the chocolate all the weird variants thing. of like the gargoyles yeah. and everything yeah 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 i'm sure like with future updates they'll add them back in but like 50 different unique enemies for the first batch of missions is probably not not too bad, I would probably say. Yeah. Like, you probably have, like, your Agrabah variants and your, your like, Wonderland variants, and I don't know, who knows how many worlds we're going to be getting, first of all, but, like, in the first batch, right. but I think 50 is a pretty decent set. Like, there'll probably be a couple of unique bosses in there as well. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure Dark Side's in there, for sure. <laughs> I think he has to be, yeah. Um, it's interesting, though, that, like, if you have a Shadow now, and it's a one-star enemy... Does that mean it's ever going to get stronger, or like it's always going to be a garbage enemy? Like, um, I don't know if this real, or like they're going to scale with your level or something. But like, okay, is that what you're saying? Like the these, like in Union Cross, you can you can have a level. I think this is literally just a tracker of how many enemies you've defeated. I think because okay. it's just defeated six out of fifty-one. Like it's not like. You collected their right. spirit card, whatever. It's literally you so you're defeated. Like, um, <clears throat> sorry, I keep cutting you off. No, 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 you're um, fine. But like how these, how so these are like bronze tier. So you can't like click the next icon. It's just like, oh hey, this is this is one out of four ranking, and these are like one one star enemies. Right. And then like number twenty is like a two star. A two star, for example. Yeah. I I don't know. Yeah. I'm I'm just wondering now, like. Or if, if, or if we sense. can fight a four-star variant of the Shadow at some point, like... Right. Or if they just keep adding in, like, stronger and stronger Heartless as we keep leveling up, like... Oh yeah, we don't I'm know. I'm sure... I feel like that's their kind of mantra or whatever, like... They like to just buff the enemies that they already have. Right, because it saves you making up new ones. Like, you just go, okay, now the Shadow is level 5,000. Like, you just keep yeah. increasing the number and keep increasing the health bar, like... Yeah. I um, think uh, the other thing too on the screen is the jewels and the skip tickets. 100%. Yeah, 100%. 100%. So we've got our battle Which points I'm at the hoping, top there. 
but we've right. also got these golden tickets which are a recolor i think that already that asset exists in union cross it might not have the sparkle on it but i'm like 50 yeah, percent sure it right. exists already um and of course our good friend jules is back <laughs> Oh I feel like boy! <laughs> people have to come from you. Yeah, I think we were talking about it, and there's really a, a lot of different ways I could use them. But um, we're thinking like, or I'm thinking they probably are going to come from Union Cross. Like this is like the crossover. You get either currency to use from this game in Union Cross, and it's like tallied up up there, or I don't know. But I'm not really too happy to see Jules in Dark Road. <laughs> I think <laughs> either way. I think our, we all sort of knew that there was going to be a gacha system coming with this game, and yeah, it seems that it's literally Jules again. <laughs> Which I guess if if we're going to go with the Union Cross analogy of like, oh yeah, well we used Jules when we did it, so that's just the currency of Scarlet. It was just when we formed Daybreak Town, we just kept using Jules. So, right. uh, <laughs> but well, yeah, I it's Moogle. I guess there's Moogles scholar. hanging around. They survived. And I mean, there's a Moogle tickets right there, so I, I assume so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like we were wondering for people that aren't interested in Union Cross, like if, if they wanted to buy jewels that carried over to Union Cross or could be spent in either version of the game, that would be a good incentive to get them to start playing Union Cross and hopefully get invested there and then start spending money to do well in both. Like it's a clever system of like, if it's one currency that's potentially shared, or maybe you get, maybe if you buy 3,000, like a weekly VIP in Union Cross, you get 3,000 in each game. You get 3,000 a piece that can't be shared. Or maybe it's one one currency that is shared between both. But either way, investing in one will just will get you invested in the other because you'd be like, oh, well, I got some free stuff in Union Cross because I bought, I bought the global VIP, I bought the overall VIP this week and they gave me some bonuses <laughs> right. here. But it also gave me some bonuses there, so I better go ahead and check those ones out because it'd be a, a shame, it'd be a waste to not use them. And then before you know it, you're invested in both. So it's clever. It's, I mean, yeah. as everything in this game, it's always clever. But obviously, just I'll be free to play in this game as well. Don't worry. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I just noticed the um, the album has like the the arrows on the left and right. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming this will be like your enemies and cards and whatever else you can collect in this game yes because you can see there's there's three books there right so maybe like one is a book of enemies one is a book of metal cards one is a book of i don't know worlds maybe? worlds uh, sure cut, uh no probably they probably wouldn't store them in the album but maybe. maybe where else like we only have five options so of the menu here we've got stats album home missions and shop albums probably oh, the closest the place the album, right i think true but what I, I guess we don't know what else that'll take us to like true the menu in union cross is just like a quick way of getting to some of the things you can already get to from like the home screen like you can on the home screen you can get to the quest to the shop to your character you from to the, the top theater? left you can't get to your equipment or the theater i don't think but like i think you can get to your equipment from the menu yeah from the top left yeah i mean yeah but I mean, yeah you probably have the options in the menu you probably have like the menu will probably take you back out to the main hub to get back into yeah. union cross uh, and on oh, and x trace there, can't, yeah. can't forget about the chat client uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I keep for yeah I, didn't, I forgot that the thing was even they forgot like about chat it thing the kingdom Hearts three trailers are still coming soon <laughs> <laughs> it's been a been a while that i forgot about that but yeah, I think because there's three books listed here, would it be more than just an enemy album for sure? But no, good point. Great point there. Hmm. Um, and yeah, a little Mickey symbols, I guess, but not not a Mickey head. It's a little Erica symbol, for lack of a better term. If you've completed all the missions, I guess, or completed the album. I can't imagine you can complete the home menu or the stats menu or the shop, but the shop will probably light up because there's new things to buy. I the level 99. Yeah, maybe. Oh, well, I guess 99 isn't the cap in this mobile game sure yeah we're at 850 on union cross right now <laughs> um but yeah there's still a fair bit to go over and like okay we could probably talk about the plot all day and like our theories for what will happen to the characters but i think we may have touched on just about everything we want to touch on here like like battle points we're still not sure on 
you can give your your own player a name and it'll probably have a number, I guess, but like you can't customize your Zane or it. in terms of appearance at all, we don't think. Doesn't um, seem like it. I mean they have the pieces to do it, but I sure. don't think they would do that. Probably not. But who knows? Yeah. It's worth noting that like when we first see Xehanort, he's in that outfit that we've seen again in Birth by Sleep in 3D, but bef immediately he's got the, you know, the new boy in black, the youth in black um, outfit that we saw in King Lance 3, so. Yeah, so that that guy is still like, that's a little child Xehanort growing into the child that we see in King Lance 3. And I guess we'll go through his time in Scala and eventually begun to, begin to take on the Michael Mastery exam and in in leaving to go and tour the worlds after he's done the done, done the lap of the worlds he'll come back i think he's gonna he's gonna see the mark of Ma Ma master of masters before he goes on the, the world tour get the coat from him do the world tour come back and then talk to him which we see in remind so there's still plenty of stuff you know that we a lot of gaps we can fill in here obviously we want to know who these characters are and why we haven't seen them yet for the rest of the series right. so lots to go over People seem to be excited though. I'm really happy that people seem to be responding well to these um, these screenshots. And I think the marketing for it is pretty cool this time around. Obviously COVID kind of so. upset things, yeah. but like, E3 would be happening right now if not for COVID. So I'm positive this stuff would have been coming out as part of like the E3 announcement leading up to E3. So um, in fact, they even could have been on the same day. Like nothing may have changed for all we know. <laughs> Who knows, but... I think we'll see this yeah, game pretty soon. I think we'll see it probably within a month or so. It won't, it won't be much longer. And apparently more back-to-back -back announcements until it comes out, so there's plenty more stuff to go over. Um, yeah, that's what I have me thinking. It's going to be pretty soon. Yeah, because how much more can they, they show us? They have that much stuff lined yeah. up, right? They're doing back-to-back -back updates. Apart from just like more batches of screenshots that kind of show us less and less each time. But Right. Yeah. But I think from just from these screenshots, I feel like we've kind of got the gameplay down yeah like kind of understand what the mechanics are and stuff yeah so. i see a lot a lot of flick rush and yeah. a lot of like um kingdom Hearts key and with a bit of chain memory splashed in for good measure with the slate system so mm -hmm. yeah yeah a lot to, a lot to think about still and um but we probably shouldn't talk much longer because we're going for 45 minutes holy crap oh, okay uh, let's <laughs> let's call it here guys uh <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I didn't realize it was that long. Neither. We were just, we were just talking. Yeah. But, oh, my God. Um, yeah, Water. Thank you so much for being here, man. I really appreciate it. Guys, can you please yeah, check yeah. out Water's channel? He does really, really, really in-depth uh, technical like breakdowns of like more high-level Kingdom Hearts concepts. The videos are really well thought out, really well animated. He does, a, he does a fantastic job and deserves a lot more views. So, Water, thanks so much for being here, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it, yeah. <laughs> we got through it, right? Anyway, you guys, I'll see you later. Uh, I'm going to cut this video down, I guess. Hopefully, it takes some minutes out of it. But <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you so much. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.